I wanted to do a quick follow-up video from last time where I talked about some shorthands that you can do inside C by way of talking about advanced topics in C programming. Uh, and I forgot to mention a couple of the shorthands, so I want to cover that here in sort of a bonus video. Uh, the first one is a shorthand for the if statement. So normally when we're doing an if statement, we're doing the whole if else blocks and we're using the curly braces, but there's another shorthand way to do that. Uh, let me show you uh, one example to do that. So we'll do a, um, a function uh, inside a, a program. We'll do, um, uh, do a uh, program called uh, minimum and um, include standard IO. And let's go ahead and write a function uh, called minimum. So uh, minimum, and we'll do uh, integer uh, A and integer B. And so normally we might use a full if statement like uh, if A is less than B, then we're going to return the value of A. Uh, otherwise, else uh, return uh, B. All right, that's a, a very simple function to write. Uh, we're just doing a quick test uh, for uh, A and B, and if A is less than B, that's the one we should return, and if it's not, then return B. So it's implementation of, min, uh, of the minimum function. Uh, let's go ahead and test that in the program. So we'll do int main, and uh, we'll do our two variables here. We'll do uh, int uh, x, and we'll set that equal to, I don't know, let's say 1, uh, and we'll do y, and we'll set that equal to 2. Uh, just because it can be important later. I'll just do a real quick uh, reminder of what those variables are. So we'll do, uh, uh, we'll do x uh, is that value and y is that value. And we'll do a printf of uh, the minimum is that value. And then uh, it's uh, the minimum of uh, x and y. And then let's go ahead and just remind ourselves, because it's going to be important uh, later here, uh, copy and paste, we'll remind ourselves what these values are, and then we'll return back to the operating system. So, you know, this is not unusual. This is exactly what we were doing before. Let me just real quick uh, write a, a compile it so we can actually show that this works. So uh, i16gcc, we'll turn on all warnings. Uh, we're going to save this as uh, minimum.exe, and we'll compile minimum.c. If I don't have any errors in my program, which I don't think I do, I should get a prompt back. There we go. And now I can run minimum, right? So uh, x is 1, y is 2, the minimum of that is 1. And afterwards, the variables are not changed, right? So that's as you'd expect. So uh, let's go back to that, um, that, that, that function. And rather than do this if else block, let me actually simplify that. Uh, so here's the shorthand version of an if statement. It's going to basically insert uh, values inside these uh, parentheses. Uh, and I want to start with a test. So the same test I did before, a less than uh, and then that since my test, I actually want to, uh, since this is an inline uh, sort of a shorthand of if, uh, what do I do if A is less than B? Well, you use a delimiter of a question mark, and now we uh, actually insert the value that we want to have if A is less than B. So it's going to be uh, A. And then what if A is not less than B? What if that, that test is false? Well, then you get a colon, and you actually uh, use the other value that I want, which is B. Uh, and so before all this, we're going to actually say uh, return, and at the end of that, we're going to have a colon. And so what am I doing? This is a one-line version of the minimum function, and it's going to do that by saying, okay, we'll go ahead and immediately return a value, but before we do that, we're going to do a quick test, and that test goes inside these uh, parentheses. That's the whole value we're, we're testing, or, evalu or the, that we're evaluating. Uh, the first test is uh, just is A less than B? And there's our question mark. So if it's true, then it's going to return the value of A, or rather it's going to insert the value of A. And uh, if it's uh, if that test is not true, it's going to insert the value of B. And it's I, I'm using insert because it's going to insert that uh, in place of these parens. And so basically it's going to be 
uh, return A or return B. Uh, and so that should be exactly what I did before. So let's, let's go ahead and compile this um, and see that we get the same values. And I don't have any warnings, so let's go ahead and come and run the program. And you can see that X is one, Y is two, the minimum value of that is one. So that's a, uh, a very simple way to uh, do a, um, an inline uh, if statement. It's uh, very handy in certain circumstances. I wouldn't do anything very, very long. Uh, but as you can see here, it's, it's easy to use in certain circumstances where what you're trying to test is short and you just need to insert a specific value uh, that's, that's also very short. I find that to be not too bad to read. It's pretty easy to read. Uh, the longer it gets, the harder it's going to be to read, and that's going to be harder to debug. Uh, now, this can also get you into trouble. Uh, so let me talk about that. I mentioned last week that plus plus and minus minus can get you into trouble in certain circumstances, but I didn't really give it a good example of it. Uh, well, this is one of the places where it can get you into trouble. Let me uh, let me let me go back to that minimum function, um, and um, let's say you were reading a uh, a C programming book and you said, "Oh gosh, they have this neat thing called macros." Uh, I don't actually have to write an entire function for minimum. I can do that as a macro. Well, what's a macro look like? Well, remember we did parameters and we talked about things like uh, define uh, the value of pi as 3.141592635, right? Whatever, right? So that means that anytime the compiler sees this uh, uh, symbol in your, in your code, it's going to replace it with this uh, literal string. We don't want to have a semicolon at the end of that because that's going to be inserted literally, right? So whenever you did the, the defines, you didn't have a semicolon at the end. Um, so we're going to, uh, it, it looks very similar to that. So rather than doing uh, define pi to a number or any kind of symbol to a number, we can actually say uh, minimum. I'm going to get rid of the minimum function here in a second, but let's look at what we got. Define minimum and then uh, it might be uh, A and B. I'll do it uppercase just so we can see what we're doing. Um, so if it sees that, if it's a macro, it's, it, well, macro means that it's going to see these, these parens and, and sort of think of it as a function. It's going to basically do some uh, uh, inline expansion for us uh, as though it were a function. So what's it going to insert? Well, let's go ahead and do my uh, thing that I had down below. Um, I want to have a test. And then I want to return something. And uh, if it's true, I want to return something else if it's false. So uh, what do I want to do it? I want to do a test here of um, A. I'm going to put the, the value itself inside these brackets because I might have a statement rather than a single variable. So I want to make sure that whole thing is contained. Uh, a is less than B. And if A is less than B, then it should return the value of A. And if A is not less than B, it should return the value of B. And so that one line statement, that macro, uh, is the same as the code that I've written down here, or it should be. Well, let's go ahead and get rid of it. First of all, let's go ahead and compile our program and uh, just remind ourselves that, hey, actually this does work. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and run minimum. And it's working the same way you did before, right? You, if you uh, did this in your code, you'd say, gosh, that, that's a really neat way to do that. So uh, uh, I'm going to use macros all the time, maybe. Uh, well, um, think again. Uh, be very careful about how you're using these macros, uh, because maybe you're going to be putting uh, uh, this kind of a thing inside a loop. And inside that loop, you say, I, I, I need to increment my variable at some point. Well, I, I know that if I uh, do x plus plus, uh, that should be uh, C is going to use the value of X and then it's going to add one to it. Uh, and so that means that if I compile this program, X is starting out at one up here. And then uh, the minimum uh, should be uh, between one and two. And um, because it's going to use the value of x before it increments it, or that's what you'd think, and then it's going to uh, print the value of x and y, and because it's uh, incremented uh, x, um, both x and y should be 2. That's the assumption that you would make, uh, but it turns out that has now added a bug, 
And let's look at what that looks like. So we'll do save and quit. Uh, we'll go ahead and compile our program. And uh, now that I can run the program, minimum, well, look at that. Somehow, the minimum is not one. The minimum is, in fact, two. Uh, and when the uh, uh, when that statement, printf statement is done, x is not two, x is now three. Somehow, I've added an extra one to uh, my variable, despite the fact that I only had one plus plus. Well, you'd think you had one, one plus plus. Let's go back real quick uh, one more time and look at what we had done. What that had done up here, uh, when, it, when we defined a macro that said minimum a, b, is we told the compiler, just go ahead and insert everything uh, over here, uh, which was the a less than b question, uh, and then a colon b. Uh, well, that means that everything's going to be inserted uh, that was on the left as A and B uh, to the right as A and B, which means that we had a X plus plus here and we had an X plus plus there. And so, yeah, um, the first time it does the test, if X plus plus is less than B, so one was used in the test, um, then it's going to uh, uh, say, okay, well, I can use the value of A at that point, but once we're done with that test, X plus plus has happened. So now uh, whatever I was using in A, which is X, is, uh, is now two. Um, but here we're putting in A again, which is another X plus plus. So it's going to put in the value of x at this point, which is 2, which is why we get printf, the minimum is 2. Uh, and then when it's done, it's going to do that plus plus. And so that's why at the bottom uh, we get this uh, x is 3. So that's a, a very interesting uh, way that you can add a subtle bug to your program. Uh, so be very, very careful if you're going to use those macros. Uh, now, I wanted to show one other uh, thing that we can do with uh, advanced, advanced topics in C. So we talked about how to do binary, and I want to show uh, a rewrite a function that we'd done earlier in the series uh, about testing if a number was even or odd. So uh, if you remember, we'd, we'd written a, uh, let me go ahead and exit out of this, um, and then we'll start up another, pro another uh, one here, uh, which is uh, is odd.c. And let me write a, a normal is odd statement. Normally we would say, um, uh, do an int uh, is odd, and then uh, we'd say, okay, well, I've got an integer value that's, we'll pass it as a. And then we would normally say something along the lines of if uh, a modulo 2 is 1, right? So 3 divided by 2 is 1 with a remainder of 1, and modulo is going to give us the remainder. So there's a 1. If it's uh, five, five modulo of two will be two remainder of one, uh, but two divided by two is uh, one with a remainder of zero. So if it's if the modulo is uh, of dividing by two is one, uh, then we know it's odd. So we can actually uh, do a uh, return uh, some true value, which will be one in this case. Uh, otherwise, uh, we're going to return. Uh, false values will turn zero. So that's that's a normal way that we do that, and we'll just do a main function to show that int um, and uh, uh, main. Uh, oops, main. And then um, let's do int uh, x and y. So we'll do uh, x is uh, we'll just say three. And then um, y will make that one even, and that one will be, uh, we'll, we'll just do four. And let's go ahead and say, all right, uh, if is odd x, uh, then I'm going to uh, just say put s uh, x is odd, oops, and uh, otherwise else put s x is even. And we'll do that for the other one as well. If 
uh, is odd y. Then we'll just do a put s y is odd. And do the else put s y is even. And we'll turn back the operating system. Uh, let's just compile this real quick, just to remind ourselves uh, what we got. Oh, my, before we do anything, I should probably print out what that is. So printf x is that value, x, and printf y is, oops, y is that value, y. Save and quit. i16gcc, turn on all warnings, save that as is odd.exe, and uh, Go ahead and uh, compile is odd.c. If I don't have any warnings, looks like I don't, uh, I can go ahead and run is odd. And x is odd and y is even. So that's good. So there's another way that we can write that though. Since we learned about binary, let's go into our, into our program here is odd. Um, and there's another way that we can do that. Let's let's get rid of my uh, what I've got in here, and I'll just rewrite this. Let's remind ourselves of something real quick. Remember binary. Uh, binary uh, one is going to look something like that, and a binary two is going to look like uh, that. Let me actually line those up. Uh, and then a binary 3 is going to look like uh, 0011. Binary 4 is going to look like 0100. Uh, 0, 0. And I'll do one more. 5 is going to look like uh, 0101. Right? Because if you remember our binary, um, this is the 1's place. This is the 2's place, this is the 4's place, this is the 8's place, and then so on and so forth off to the left. Uh, and each one of those is called a bit, and 8 of those together is a byte. Uh, so an interesting thing to note here is that for all the odd numbers, we've got a 1 in the 1's place. And for any even number, of course, it's going to be a 0. So we can do a very short is odd function and return a logical and the value one because one is going to look like this and let's say I passed it two so I can compare uh, this and I can compare that so remember the and that they if you look at columns uh, they both have to be one for that to be a one and neither one of those is a one. And that's all I'm going to get. The rest of them are all going to be zeros. Uh, but for a number like three, well, yep, I've got a one over there. So that'll be a, it'll return a one there. And about everything else is going to be zero because I don't have any other ones up here. And so that's a very fast way uh, to write an is odd function. To actually just do a binary uh, and to see... Uh, uh, to match up the uh, the ones. There's no modulo, there's no division, there's no evaluation of, of, uh, of arithmetic. It's just a quick binary check uh, to see if there's a one in that last position. And we're going to do that with that binary and uh, with the value of one. Let's go ahead and compile our program uh, one more time. And uh, if I don't have any warnings, which I don't think I have, uh, now I can run is odd. And you can see again, uh, x, which is 3, is odd, and y, which is 4, is even. So that's another way that you can uh, use binary to uh, improve your code, make it very, very fast. Because again, you're not doing any kind of arithmetic. You're not looking at Majulo. Uh, you're just doing a quick binary expression, uh, return a uh, logical and with 1. And that will return either a 0 or a 1. Uh, depending if it's uh, if it's even or odd. So uh, that's one other way that you can sort of look at some uh, advanced programming topics in C. Uh, and that's what I'll wrap up for this week. If you have any other questions or comments, uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, before I go, let me uh, uh, thank everyone who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. Uh, some of you are supporting me at a higher level, and I wanted to thank you here, so thank you very much. Um, and uh, that's it for this week. So uh, visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.